this is Gail. Welcome to my video. It's Service Dog Fridays, where I always do an FAQ on frequently asked questions about a service dog. Yesterday, I was out, a child came up, and here's how it always goes. The question is, can I pet your service dog? And the answer, or can I pet your dog? And I'm like, no. And I go and I explain, you know, this is a service dog, he's a working dog, you can't pet him while he's working, and I am so sorry. But since he's a service dog, he's working and he's helping me, and I can't let you pet him. And then the next question that ever comes up is, why do you have a service dog? Now, adults cannot ask that question. It is technically illegal to ask why you have a service dog. But little kids can get away with lots of things that adults can't get away with. Right, Tomlin? So, yes, this cuddle puppy is on my lap. And it looks like he's staying here, but, and that's okay. So, the big question is, why do I have a service dog? And sometimes it's like, why, why, why do you have a service dog? I mean, after all, he's expensive. I have to spend money on him, whether I want to or not. He has to have his medical care, whether I can afford it or not. He has to have his heartworm. He has to have his vaccinations. He has to be in perfect health. He has to be free of everything, including sneezes. So, why? Why do I have a service dog? It's because he makes my life better. Don't you, Matt? Okay, so, it's because he helps in many ways. But that, in and of itself, isn't the only reason why I have a service dog. There are ways that I can compensate for my disabilities that don't involve a service dog. For example, when I'm at school, I have friends who will help if I fall and get hurt. They'll come in, they'll help me with my books or whatever I need, and they are awesome. I'm around other people, so I have that security that if something happens, somebody's going to at least call security at school, right? When I'm by myself, I don't have that security. So if I'm at home by myself and hubby is out like earning a living or meeting with somebody and I have a problem, I have nobody that can help me. But I do have somebody that will come running in that will S-T-A-N-D, S-T-E-A-D-Y so I can brace up against him more so when he was younger um, I also have somebody who will get my medicine if I drop it and can't get under the table. And who will lay down and take a nap. <clears throat> but I also have somebody who will just be with me and sometimes just having that security of another warm body there. Now, when I'm at home and people are here, I still need help because... For example, one day, I was in the kitchen, it's the middle of the night, I fall. Tomlin comes running in to help me. The rest of the house is asleep. But he knew immediately, with the crash, in the kitchen, which was me falling, that something was wrong. So he comes in. Well, the rest of the family, they're asleep. Because it's like the middle of the night, and that's what you do in the middle of the night. But he was able to go get a family member to come and help me. And he bugged my family members until that happened. And so he helps in that way. So that's one of why do you have a service dog questions. Another thing that he will do is get into places that I can't reach. So if I drop something, let's just say I drop my medicines and they go under the table and I can't reach them. That's what he does. Um, so really for me, that's why I have them. Now, the choice for why I have a service dog, I looked at what I thought I would need. And I looked at my, looked at first at my disabilities. Then I looked at how are we going to mitigate them? How, was I, how do I live with all this wrong with me? When I looked at those things, and it's like, at the time, I couldn't walk, so I was on a walker, but I was coming off of the walker. And at the time, I was having a lot of trouble with my lungs 
because I have asthma. So periodically I can talk and periodically I can't. And so if I'm in a coughing fit, I get really kind of lightheaded and dizzy. If you have asthma, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, but I looked at all of that <clears throat> and everything else, and I sat down with my husband and with my daughter. And at first, we got him with the idea that he would help my daughter um, because of the, like the whole epilepsy and seizure things. And we did a video on that, and I'll link that below. So, he was, the first idea was he would help her. But then we started looking at myself. And so, being able to carry books, being able to carry items on the days that I was unsteady was a big deal. So, we knew that we wanted a larger dog, so on and so forth, because there's only so much weight you can put on a walker before it tips over. It's not supposed to, but sometimes it will. It's got, I have a little, had a little hanging baggie on it, and if I put too many things on it, like a couple of water bottles, a book, you know, and such, then it would tip over. Not such a big deal when I'm at home, but what if I'm at church and I have a meeting? Not where you want to be falling around and have your walker fall around. So, we have, oh, he heard me say the W-A-L-K word. I guess I know what I'll be doing in a few minutes. <clears throat> so, it would tip over and fall, and then I would have the problem of, you know, how to pick it up. Was there somebody home? Was there not somebody home? So, we started looking at what exactly would I need. And then we looked at um, how to fill those needs. Well, when you have a service animal, you are not having somebody in your house for six months. You are not having a little PT running around that you can pet and dress up in cute clothes and things like that. You have an assistance tool on four legs. Now, it's the, probably the most expensive tool or one of the most expensive tools out there, especially when you talk about your making a lifelong commitment to someone who's making a lifelong commitment to you. And sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. It's just like any other tool. Sometimes it fits and sometimes it doesn't. For us, we were very, very fortunate. It took two years to find them, but we had to go through the process of why did we want a service animal in the beginning. And it just looked like, when you looked at everything, it looked like he was going to be the best fit. So, that's why we got a service animal. Now, some of you guys who are watching probably have service animals too. So, if you want to chime in below, hit light up my comment section, okay? Because those comments aren't just for me, they're for everybody else. So, light them up and leave your comments. Also, please like, subscribe. It really does help for you to subscribe, share it with other friends, and get the word out about the channel. It also helps to leave your questions below. So if you want to know anything about more about why I have a service dog or anything, just leave that below. But that's what the comment section is for, so light it up. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you out, about, and online. Bye! I got suckered into going to the toy store, bought him some new toys. What happens? He goes with his old one. Oh well.